Okay, this right. next is disturbing. It's from John Flynn. Okay, that, I imagine John Flynn is an AEW fan. Okay, right. The subject is MJF being a victim of a hate crime in high school 15 years ago. Has any wrestling news journalist fact checked or questioned MJF's hate crime accounts from his high school high school days? I say it's just as believable as Hogan joined Metallica. The kid wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 stop. <laughs> like, I gotta, like, Hogan, I he Metallica? Hogan said yeah, Hogan. he was considered as the to be the bass player in Metallica, and Lars Metallica. came out and said, I've never yeah. seen that in my life. The kid <laughs> lived in Plainview, is fifty percent Jewish. His parents are very huge in the community. There's no way anyone threw quarters at him and it wasn't reported in the local papers or on record anywhere. He's making stuff up that actually happened to the black kids in that school. Okay, so, but, but, bro, so this guy wants us to fact check a wrestling promo. Well, here's the I mean, thing, bro. Really? I mean, I mean, come on. How many black kids were probably going to a Jewish school? And the other thing is, what well, you know, that could have happened to him. You know, he might have been a jerk or whatever, and you know, it happened. You know, in the privacy of maybe three people, or maybe he I made it up. I don't and care if it, it happened or not. It's all part of the yeah. wrestling promo. And it was a good promo. Right. Uh, now, some people like might say right. some people might say that making up a hate crime in the in your persona as a character is too much. I wouldn't. Some people I, might say that. But yeah, I agree with what, what Disco said. Exactly. It, it's it's not it's not reality. Right. It's, it's supposed <laughs> to be MJF the character. It's like when Sergeant Slaughter, someone tried to expose him for not really being a Marine. Right. Like, but he's Bob <laughs> Remus, you know, or whatever his name is. Yeah. Bro, who, who better looked the part than him ever? Bro, he looked, yeah. you could believe he was a think, Marine sergeant. Do you think Hogan would have been more popular if he would have been the lead guitarist for Metallica as opposed to being Hulk Hogan, the professional wrestler? No. No? No. Well, because really? I don't think he would have been any good, you know? I don't know. So. What what type of, like, bro, look at, the, go look at the Q rating. Uh, do you know what a Q rating is? Mm-hmm. Okay, look up Q rating for Metallica and Q rating for Hulk Hogan. Oh, the band Metallica is the band Metallica. more well known. That's what I'm saying. The, what I'm, saying. Right. I'm saying right. yeah, they're more well known. If you, it's like, look, look that up. Look that up, Joe. Yeah. The Q rating yeah. for Metallica and the Q rating for Hulk Hogan and see the difference. I mean, maybe Hogan, bro, bro. Hogan is a global. I mean, you go what? There's not a lot of place on earth that people know do not know Hulk global. Hogan. I'm, not, I'm yeah. not saying he isn't. Right. Um. I would think it's pretty close, you know, because he's like the face of professional wrestling. And yeah. the WWE is a nine billion dollar company that he was like a pioneer of. If he was know? in the band so, and he was a good player and he was successful, he would obviously be very famous because he'd still be six. six like I said, and, who's more popular, I mean? Lars Ulrich or, yeah. or Hulk Hogan? Who's more I, famous? I think I think Lars and James and those guys from Metallica are more famous. Uh, I gotta be. Really? There's no curating website. I, I gotta be honest. I'm looking. Okay. I put well, it in the look, chat. Look and nothing came up. Yeah. Oh, we'll go on chat. Chat GPT or the, one of the AI things. And they, they'll have it real quick. Okay. Okay. Right. And next is from Ben. Subject is Collision. What's up, K100? I tried to watch Collision last night, but for three enhancement matches and a woman's tag, I tapped out before the main event. Sounds similar to my viewing <laughs> experience. Uh, Joe, are you prepared to go on record and condemn this deplorable undercard? Joe, were you willing to condemn the undercard of Collision? Let's look I that would, up. What 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 was the the actual card on the show? Let's let's go over this real quick, okay? Well, this is not a review because Conan didn't watch. You still you watch Collision, Conan? Yeah, but I was in Triple Mania, but I'll watch right, it right, this right. week. Right. Maybe we can okay. talk. Maybe you watch it before Thursday. We can we can go over. It. But here's, right. the, here's the matches: the acclaimed okay. versus the Iron Savages. Okay. okay. Mercedes Martinez and Diamante versus Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander. Okay. Samoa Joe versus Andrew Everett. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew, that's not Mark. By the way, that's not Marcus Everett, the kid that would splat. It's Andrew Everett, and then the Luchasaurus kid that I've never heard of. Luchasaurus versus Brock Anderson. Okay, that's the undercard because the main event was Punk <laughs> and FTR versus the House of Black. Yeah, that I'm undercard. Uh, <laughs> is, Are you willing to condemn, get the condemn, condemnation? Music I will out. absolutely content condemn that. Yeah. Okay, you want any condemnation? Do you have condemnation? You want to put a comment or a promo like I cut on the U.S. Women's Soccer Team or no? No, I don't want to go that far, but we'll we'll play the right. we'll play the condemnation music. <laughs> Joe condemned it. That's good enough. Okay, next yeah. one's from Adge Grucot. Yeah. He's back. Subject mm -hmm. is Russo to do a charm offensive. Um, what is that? Whatever that is. Greetings from across the pond. After the show was the dark side of the ring batch of the beach. Is it time for Vince to go on a charm offensive of sorts? Start attending these meet and greets, engage more marks and with with engage more with marks and generally be more affable. 
The like of Cornette and Bischoff tend to personally only attack him on a pers personality basis. So if Vince got out there more and showed what a decent guy he appears to be, he'd expose them more. On a side note, did you ever think that after KG, you'd find two even bigger Billy and Larry Dallas? My God, that rant by Dallas was painful. I don't care if he was drunk. He came across as a complete. His segments are even more skippable now, and that's from Edge from Telford. Wow. Edge Grucott from Telford, uh, UK. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, that's from bro. You know, Vince gets a lot of, like, a lot of people personally attack him. And, like, me and Conan, like, bro, we know the guy. He's not the type of guy that merits, like, the, 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 the insults that this guy gets. You know what I'm saying? Like, Vince is a nice guy. You know, like, if you're like, like, Conan, do, like, did Vince ever get mad at you? Like, like, or, like, bury you? Like, like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, what, what do you, what do you think about that? What do you think about these guys, like, constantly, you know, person attacking him personally? And what do you think? Well, it's hard to attack somebody personally if you don't know them. Right. And we don't know what interaction they had with Vince. I always found Vince to be really cool, funny. He's a little too loud for my taste, like the New York jockey screaming all the time. But that's right. his stick. You know, his stick is being a rebel, bro. He ain't going to go on no charm offensive, you know? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. his thing is I'm business. I'm really out of it, even though he really isn't. Um. You know, I'll never write again, and I'll never do this, I'll never do that. I think deep down inside, if he were to be called to WWAW, he'd go. And maybe not even because of the money, just because he's a creator, bro, and he misses creating on a big on a big canvas. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, I'm sure Impact and the Colorado Rocky Mountain Wrestling Federation, whatever it was called, that's not where he wanted to be. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Um, but yeah. He's a cool dude with me, sometimes a little too sensitive and plays the victim. And that's the only time I think he, I don't think he was mad. He was hurt. Right. He's like, why would you say that? Right. And I'm like, cause it's the truth. Why wouldn't you call me first? Okay. Do I need to get permission to talk from you or what's going on here? Right. So, you know, but I like Vince. Right. Next one's from Oz, also Garrison, the subject of his own worst enemy. Billy sucks. On social media lately, Matt Riddle has been complaining about hinting at the unhappiness with creative in WWE. Okay, but then let's look at the bigger picture. Riddle has failed multiple drug tests. He mouths off about other wrestlers on the roster and just got that chick pregnant. He works for a PG company. Matt Riddle has done absolutely nothing at all to put himself into the good books of WWE management, and for him to expect to get a push while also bringing heat on himself backstage is just plain dumb. Some have said that he's just coasting until WWE can finally clear Randy Orton for his big WWE return and do Orton versus Riddle, but what, what would we know? What is the K100 pitch opinion on Matt Riddle's complaints and Billy sucks? Um, I, 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 when, as I saw the first thing you wrote here about Matt Riddle, I, I agree 100% with literally everything that you, that this guy has said, bro. They brought the guy back from suspension. The last thing you want to do is ruffle feathers. Like don't mouth off. Don't voice your frustration. Bro, just they're, they're testing you because yeah. you, you got to you got suspended for, for drugs. So you need to come back and like, you know, let them see that you're 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 playing the game, you know. And he hasn't done that. So what what do you think about that, Conan? Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. I agree with the guy that wrote the letter. What's his name? Oslo um, or something. Yeah, Oslo Garrison. I'll, also, right. Os, Os, Oslo. Also. Yeah. Oslo. Oslo. Okay. Well, also Garrison. Um, what's this guy? Um, I agree with everything you said. Everything Disco said, and I would also add to that, not to mention that he's had some friction with Brock Lesnar and maybe Goldberg. Brock Lesnar said, I don't want to work at Goldberg. I don't want to work with this guy, you know? So you're, you're mouthing off. You have previous prop. He's such a talent. He got so over and you see right now he's been doing a lot of jobs. Oh, did you guys see raw or read a report from last night? Uh, no. no. Do you care if I what? tell you what Riddle did? What do you do? Go ahead. He, they formed a team with him and McIntyre. So that's not a bad spot, right? Right. I guess not. There you go. All right, so next one's interesting. Do you have this clip ready? Because I saw this. This is interesting. Yeah. So I Eddie bet you Hogan... Riddle will be doing the jobs. Boom. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> subject is, uh, from Eddie Hogan, the subject is Seamus Barry and Roman. You guys kind of covered this before, but the WWE wrestlers complained about WWE and the promotional campaign for SummerSlam. But recently, Seamus went off on Roman Reigns during some type of radio TV appearance. Um, you got the clip? Yep. Ready? Yeah, play it. Mm -hmm. Went away with COVID. Let's be honest. Before he went away with COVID... Uh, people didn't give a shit. 
about him. Like he was the big baby face, was wrestling Goldberg. Nobody really cared. I think in the same way that, like, in the same sense of where it benefited me to come back and wrestle in those empty arenas, in that empty arena at the Thunderdome, where people got to see how physical I really can be and allow me to that more freedom and settle into my own skin. And just say, like, you know, screw, I'm just going to go out there and have fun and do what I'm going to do. Uh, the same same sense it benefited him because he was at a point where like it was just forced down people's throats and he got to get away and then come back in, in this different character and stuff you know um, also the luxury of getting all these storyline time and everything you know I feel like he's made the most of the opportunity he's had but I feel like you know this guys on the roster are begging for that amount of time to tell their own stories and that's that's one of the only things that's, that's going is like the rest of the roster needs story time too, you know what I mean? But the MSG a couple of weeks ago, uh, it went 20 minutes over. It's like the Young and the Restless mm. that started off leading thing, you know what I mean? And so me and uh, Theory had two segs, which ended up turning into three small segs on the fly, you know? Yeah. So that's tough as well, you know, to go out and do that. So and it's definitely, definitely benefited him a lot and Heyman and the story they've been able to tell uh, all within that family and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, like, as I said, like, there's plenty of other people on the roster there too that, that could do with story time as well. You yeah. see a lot more people over. I'm not going to disagree with that, but it sounds a little bit like a little professional jealousy, to be honest with you. What, what do you think? You're muted. I'm thinking the boys are backstage and they're looking and they're like, 30 minute segment, a 20 minute segment. We only got a five minute match. You know, we'd be doing probably the same thing. And we've been in those shoes before. So it's a fascinating look because he's talking for the dressing room. You know what I'm saying? He's not talking just for him. So, you know, he does have some valid points.